While walking along the sandy shores of the Venice Lagoon in Italy, you might come across the terrifying sight of a clean washed skull embedded in the sand. They are plentiful, common, and they are the victims of the most haunted island in the world, Poveglia. Poveglia is a small abandoned island that carries the weight of dark legends, twisted folklore, and old history. Mad doctors tortured their patients, plague pits were filled up with the dead and dying, and wars were fought on her soil, spilling it with blood. And for this reason, it has been touted as being the most haunted place on earth. Too many souls walk restless among the abandoned buildings and ruins, they say. Too much anger and depression paint its walls. The island's wretched reputation was sealed over the course of centuries, the very soil stained by blood, misery, and of course, death. But Poveglia, although marred by such tragedy, still stands as a symbol for Venice. What exactly she symbolizes depends on how exactly you interpret her history, which actually starts long before mad doctors and plague pits in the 5th century. When Attila the Hun and Alaric the Goth started their invasion into Europe in the 5th century, some Italians fled to the small island of Poveglia to escape the hordes. As an island, it is easily defendable, far enough away from the mainland to see the enemy coming and easy enough to build walls around it. Some of those ancient walls still stand today. These walls stood strong and firm, defending against the hordes, protecting the small population against the onslaught. Even as Attila fell back and pushed further into the mountains, Paveglia retained its population. But walls could not defend Paveglia nor Venice against a new invading threat, bubonic plague or the Black Death. Transferred from the bite of a flea, the plague would sweep across Europe to claim over 30 million lives in 1348. Venice would handle this dark time through quarantine, Paveglia becoming a key component in keeping her mother Venice safe. Thousands of people were sent to that island for only one reason, to die. The estimate of how many were exactly sent to the island is difficult to determine, but scientists estimate anything between 100,000 to 160,000 souls. Thankfully, in 1353, the plague would fall into one of its many hibernations, and only a few years after this epidemic, a new threat pressed against the borders of Italy, this time in the form of the Genoa War. The inhabitants of Peveglia were chased off their island, and the area was turned into a military garrison housing 6,000 people. During the war, between 1378 and 1381, there were so many people on the island that they would start calling themselves Povegliotti instead of Venetians. The island served as a protection line against sea-based intrusions, particularly against the Genoa fleets. After three grueling years, the war with Genoa finally ended, and the men were ordered off the island, and she was left abandoned for another 400 years. Paveglia would not be called back into service until 1776, when the island was used as a checkpoint for goods and visitors. She was an ideal port to deal with potential quarantine situations, in particular for wool merchants. Animals were considered carriers of the Black Death, and wool was the number one suspect. As one of the largest trading towns in Europe, Venice had to keep its people and cargo secure, just as well as on 1793, several passengers were found to have plague. Terrified of the prospect of such a monster shaking loose on its inhabitants, Venice once again turned Boveglia into a quarantine zone, erecting small buildings called lazarettos, which are designated buildings specifically for those with contagious diseases. The people were separated by the severity of their symptoms. However, due to the sheer amount of people being brought to the island, these lazarettos quickly became overcrowded. They became filthy, unsanitary, they weren't well ventilated, and this only created a perfect breeding ground for the disease, which spread like wildfire. As a result, the burning ground was often used, where the infected dead was destroyed. After their flesh turned to crisp, the bones were then buried in the large pits on the island. Dozens upon dozens of plague pits were filled up with human bones that have been found all across the island. When the high tide slams against the sides of the island today, some of these bones are dislodged and they wash up on the shores of Venice, creating that grisly sight of whitewashed bones and skulls grinning at you from the shoreline. In 1776, she was assigned over to the public health office in Venetia, and finally the recognizable tower and hospital was constructed. The island's infamous reputation took flight with the hospital Poveglia Asylum right at its center. 
For over 100 years, Paveglia would act as both sanitary and quarantine for Venice, and in that time, the ground of Paveglia became the resting place for well over 100,000 souls, and so she gained the title, the Island of Death. This is one of her most well-known services, a quarantine, an island where death walked among its inhabitants, a sanctuary for the sick, disease, dying, and the insane. After the Black Death finally receded back into obscurity, Paveglia was used for a short period of time as a base of operation for Napoleon Bonaparte, but shortly after his campaign and his death, the island was abandoned once again until the early 20th century, when the eyes of doctors for the mentally insane would turn towards it. Mental science had made great leaps in the 20th century, and many countries were eager to explore those new methods. Existing buildings were refurbished to suit the needs of the patients and doctors alike. The island's isolation made it easy for doctors to perform ghastly experiments on their hapless patients, lobotomy being one of them. Most of the patients were never even meant to be in the hospital, as cases of depression and bipolar disease were all shipped off to the dreaded hospital and the island of death. And so the stain on Paveglia spread even further, and dark rumors and stories began swirling in the mouths of the people who'd fallen in the shadow of the hospital, of a crazed doctor who performed horrible experiments on his patients. According to the story, some of the patients would see the ghastly visages of wandering plague victims around the hospital. Fascinated by these hallucinations and determined to find the cause of it, the doctor forced horrible experiments on his patients, determined to find the root of the problem. Many of his patients died during these terrible experiments, and the doctor himself started seeing the ghosts, not only of the plague victims, but of his own patients. Driven mad by the images, the doctor ran up the bell tower, convinced he was being chased by angry ghosts and ghouls, and jumped out of the tower to plummet to his death. Some claim they had seen the doctor being pushed. Others say that he hadn't died when he'd hit the ground, but that a dark fog had descended upon him and choked him to death. The hospital was finally shut down in 1968 and has stood abandoned since. The darkness surrounding the island has been persistent, and with such a reputation, it is no wonder that few wish to set foot on the island. All that you will find on the island today are abandoned buildings, forgotten graves, and a small winery owned by a private party that gives some life to the island. Rumors say that the grapes grow thick and succulent, and it's all due to the human compost keeping the ground so fertile. The wine apparently isn't bad either. But the very strange thing is that very few of the stories of Paveglia are substantiated. The story of the doctor is most likely a tall tale. No proof of his existence can be traced. A ghost story easily spun in the shadow of the island's misery, and so are most claims about the island. The amount of dead is most likely exaggerated. The horrors performed on patients also exaggerated. And yet people still believe in its darkness and taint, almost willing it to be so. Ghost hunters have made sensational videos of the island, and the Venetians are quick to tell you of the wails of ghosts you can hear on the wind if you listen carefully. And in a way, it is tragic that these rumors and tales have become so a part of Paveglia, especially concerning her service. She protected Venice from invading forces, offered a solution for the Black Death, and became a sanctuary for the mentally ill. Yet despite her service, protection, and even beauty, she cannot escape these rumors of darkness and misery as if it has stained her walls, her soil, and even her very spirit. And still, despite what we say about her, what we tell and how we spread those false rumors, Paveglia still offers her service without question, willingly, devotedly, in the gift of a bottle of good wine.